Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where Karen demands to know which grandchild she's biologically related to. Am I the jerk for refusing to tell my family which of my babies I adopted? I, a single 20-year-old female, gave birth to a baby girl about two months ago. At the same time, I adopted a second baby girl who was born about three days before. My biological daughter I will call Rose. The daughter that I didn't carry I will call Lily. I got pregnant with Rose about the same time that my best friend, who I'll call Anna, got pregnant with Lily. While I was ecstatic about being pregnant, Anna was not. Anna felt that she wasn't in a good place emotionally, financially, or any other way to have a kid. She told me she was considering not having it, but that she wished her child could have a good life somewhere else. But anytime she pictured putting her kid up for adoption, she remembers all the stories of horrible adoptive parents. She said that she felt hopeless because there didn't seem to be any good answers, and that's when we came up with the hesitant plan. We decided that if after Lily's birth, Anna still didn't feel like she could raise her, I would adopt Lily and raise the girls as twins. Anna didn't want Lily to know that she was adopted, but I hated the idea of lying to a daughter of mine. We decided that once Lily was old enough to understand, I would explain that she was adopted. If at that point Anna felt ready, we would tell Lily that Anna was her biological mom, and if not, then we would say that her mother wasn't ready for her to know who she was. That way, Lily could live her life, Anna didn't need to be worried about Lily because she could check on her at any time, and Anna would be able to continue working on getting her life in order. I chose not to have any of my family in the room during the birth because I wasn't comfortable with them seeing me like that, and Anna was fighting with her family at the time. So Anna and I were the only ones in the room for each other during the births. After Lily was born, Anna still wanted me to adopt Lily, and also said that she did want to be in her life more than she originally thought. We decided that she would be the godmother of both girls and I would be their mother. When it was time for us to go home, I organized a get-together for my family to meet both of my daughters and we went forward with the adoption. As soon as my grandmother met the babies, she asked me which one was my daughter and I replied that they both were. She rolled her eyes and said that I knew what she meant. I told her that, no, I don't because they are both my daughters. She got mad about that and asked me which one was my real daughter and my parents backed her up, saying that I should tell them which daughter I had adopted. I got mad and asked them why it mattered. Both babies are my kids. I'm naturally feeding both of them. I named both of them, and I was there through the entire pregnancy for both of them, even if I only carried one of them myself. This led to a fight with my family insisting that I tell them which daughter is which, and me insisting that my grandmother apologize for implying that one of them wasn't my real daughter. My parents told me that I'm being dramatic, pointlessly stubborn, ridiculous, and that they just wanted to know when dealing with the girls which one was their granddaughter. I kicked all of them out and said unless they apologize and stop asking which daughter is adopted, they would not get to see either of them. After they left, I sent out a text saying I will tell them which is adopted when I explained to her that she is adopted. But adopted or not, they're both my kids. I also reiterated that until I get an apology and they agree to view my daughters equally, they will not see the girls and I will not be talking to them. I received a massive amount of text, ranging from them demanding that I let them see the kids and telling me how I was cruel and selfish to deprive my daughters of their love to pleading with me to just tell them which girl is which and let them see my daughters. After a few weeks of this, I said enough. The stress of trying to take care of two babies, adopt Lily and deal with my family was too much. So I sent out another text telling them that I was serious when I said I won't tell them which daughter is adopted. I then told them that I can't take their constant text anymore and anyone that texts me something that doesn't start with an apology is getting blocked. Most of my family realized I wouldn't back down and stopped texting me. I did have to block my brother who sent me two paragraphs about why I should just give our parents and grandparents what they want because it isn't worth the fight. I also had to block my mom who texted me to tell me that no one was going to help me take care of my kids until I tell them the truth about which is my real daughter. Anna agrees with me that they shouldn't care which one is adopted and says she wishes that my family didn't even know that one girl was adopted. Well, yesterday both babies were crying. Lily needed a diaper change and Rose was hungry and I realized that my mom was right. I can't be in both places at once and I can't take care of them by myself. Luckily, Anna was there and she was able to take care of them both and get them settled because I broke down sobbing and was completely useless. Now I'm starting to wonder if I'm a bad mother for not letting my daughters see their family. 
and if I have chosen the wrong hill to die on. P.S. Anna was able to cheer me up. We cuddled together and with the babies on the sofa, eating ice cream and chocolate most of the night. She is also the one who convinced me to write this post because she's obsessed with Reddit. Update. Here's a few answers to questions I see. 1. Everyone knew that Anna was pregnant and that one of them was her biological kid. Anna and I do look pretty similar on a basic level. Both have similar colors of brown hair, dark brown eyes, and we're both white. I'm a little darker than Anna. She's fair-skinned, and I always look like I have a tan. We also both got pregnant by a white guy. To me, at least, it doesn't seem obvious which girl is whose biological kid. 2. Anna had been dating Lily's biological dad for maybe half a year, but when he heard that Anna was pregnant, he told her that he didn't want anything to do with a kid. I got pregnant because I went to a party and was an idiot. I've contacted Rose's father, but he told me to give him time to think, so I've been waiting for him to come around. 3. I have not legally adopted Lily yet. Anna and I have agreed that Lily is my kid and Lily is staying at my house, but Anna is still currently her legal guardian. Right now, we're trying to figure out where Lily's father went. 4. I think I saw several people saying that I don't know how much work two babies will be. I definitely did not know what I was signing up for. Me and Anna thought we knew it would be hard, but this is not what I was expecting. Anna has been an absolute angel. She's probably the only reason I'm still sane right now. After we realized our false expectations, Anna comes over almost daily, except for the two days before I had a mini breakdown and has fallen asleep at my house a few times while caring for the kids. Another friend of ours, who I'll call James, has also been stopping by. He doesn't help with the girls because in his own words, I don't know what to do with a baby. But James makes food, cleans up the house a bit. I'm eternally grateful to both James and Anna because without them I would be lost. 5. A lot of you have pointed out that telling Lily when she is old is a bad idea. And I agree with you. That was my idea. I didn't really think about how that could affect her finding out when she was older. I'm going to talk to Anna about this because I don't want to cause my daughter any issues down the line. Not the jerk. Sounds like they will probably treat your daughters differently. I can't see why it would be so important to know. As for you depriving them of your family's love, you're protecting both of them. Your family doesn't get to decide when or what info you share. There's a big chance that when you do tell them, they'll favor one daughter. Be prepared for that. Don't let it affect your daughter's views of each other. Not the jerk. It should not matter. I get their curiosity, but I understand and respect where you're coming from. Don't worry about depriving your girls of your family. All those babies need are you and Anna. You're doing a wonderful job and it's okay to have help. I'm so happy you have Anna to help you with both the girls. You're going to be a fantastic mom always and Anna is going to be a fantastic godmother always. Focus on you and your girls. You got this. My wife constantly complains about my driving. My wife and I have been together for over 10 years and when we're driving together and I'm behind the wheel, sometimes she shouts, slow down, out of nowhere. And then she says, why are you driving so fast? In a critical tone, as if the way I'm driving is obviously unsafe. Usually I just bite my tongue and I slow down to placate her. But the thing is, the way I drive is not unsafe. I've been driving since 97, never had a ticket or been in an accident. My wife is generally a good driver, but much less experienced than me in snow and on gravel roads. And by her own admission, she has some lingering driving related issues. Yesterday she came home and told me that her car was making a rattling noise when she drove over bumps. We got into the car and I started driving down our driveway, which has plenty of bumps to hit. It's gravel and it's long. And I was driving slightly faster than usual to hit them hard to try to produce the sound that she was talking about. Suddenly my wife yelled, slow down. Why are you driving so fast? I glanced at the speedometer and I laughed, didn't slow down, shook my head and said something like, are you serious? What are you afraid of? Her response was, I'm afraid we'll skid out and go flying off a cliff. Since that was physically impossible, we were going 15 miles per hour and there was no cliff in sight. Let me remind you, we were in our driveway, the same one that we've been driving up and down for the past five years. I think I laughed and said words to the effect that she was being irrational. Predictably, she got mad at me for not validating her feelings and I told her I wasn't going to validate her irrational fear. She didn't ask me to let her out, so I kept driving and we survived the trip from the house to the road. 
Then we drove around for a while, listening to the car before going home, where my wife sulked for the rest of the evening. We argue very rarely, but today the driving thing came up. Again, I refused to validate her irrational fear. We both got as worked up as we ever do. We're both pretty calm people, but voices were raised. I told her how it annoys me when she yells at me to slow down, that it's insulting, that her fear is like being afraid of monsters under the bed, and that maybe she needs therapy to get over it. She said I'm the one with the problem because I get annoyed when she yells at me in the car, and maybe I need therapy to work on ways to not be annoyed by it, and that I should simply do what she says in order to validate her feelings, the way you do for someone that you love. Eventually, we decided to end the discussion for the night because it wasn't going anywhere positive. She did her thing, and I made a Reddit account to ask this question. Am I the jerk? Yelling at the driver is annoying and dangerous, not the jerk. My mom does this thing where she gets terrified out of nowhere, and she'll do a really dramatic fright sound as a reflex. It really scares me and makes me jump. She always apologizes, but it's more likely to make me crash than whatever she gets a fright from. It drives me nuts. Not the jerk. Shouting at you out of the blue while you're driving is an actual danger. Not to mention getting yelled at is not an annoyance that you have to get over. It's her badly treating the person she supposedly loves. It's very telling that she demands that you get therapy into tolerating her issues instead of, you know, her solving her own issues. You don't have to learn to live with shouting and hissy fits. She has to stop doing that and learn to communicate as a proper adult particularly when she could cause an accident, which she should want to avoid since you're driving so fast. He chose the rock star life over his infant daughter and fiancé, and he thinks he did nothing wrong. He had it all, a devoted fiancé who swooned over him, a perfect baby, a comfortable apartment she paid for while he was out of work, all bills paid while she balanced childcare and a full-time job so he could pursue his dream of becoming a rock star. He's a very talented drummer. He promised that once this band hit it big, his baby girl and love would want for nothing ever again. He quit drinking the day she got pregnant and was more motivated and productive than ever. It looked like he was really going places with this new band. But after she gave birth, he grew distant. He started drinking again. He stopped coming home at night. He lost his side gig that was supposed to help pay for bills and complained about having to watch the baby on occasion so she could focus on housework. She was a single mother long before she got the news. The band went on tour a few times while she stayed home alone. It took a couple more months for him to come clean after he was pressured by some friends he was bragging to. Turned out, he hooked up with the lead singer and the bassist while on tour. They were both beautiful women living the rock star life with him. She was numb when she found out. He said he didn't want this to get between him and his family. She told him that the only way this was going to work was if he found a new band to follow his dreams with. He chose the band. She chose to protect her sanity, her daughter, and her heart. He's homeless now, blackout drunk every chance he gets. He's asked to visit his daughter once in a while, and he does, sort of. He comes over to shower and sleep on the couch about once a week. He still tells her none of this would have happened if he were famous already, that she will regret kicking him out over something stupid. She's my best friend. She doesn't have time to lament what she's lost. She just has to keep moving forward for her sweet princess. She doesn't want me to lash out or call him out, so I took her to Costco and bought her diapers and essentials. And now I'm venting here anonymously just to tell you all. If you already have everything money can't buy, why throw it all away just for a chance at fame? Dating talented musicians is pretty much always a gamble. They aren't really known for their mental stability, and music is always the priority. Am I the jerk for bluntly explaining to my wife why our kids like me more than her? My wife has been complaining recently that our kids always seem to prefer spending time with me over her. They never go to her for anything they need, it's always me. I just answered that it's because I spend more time with them than she does. She stated that I don't, so I broke it down for her just to point blank. Both kids are young and they need parental supervision for everything. They wake up between 5.30 a.m. and 6 a.m. I'm the one who gets up with them every single morning. Wife gets up at 7.30 a.m. weekdays and 9 a.m. on weekends. Low end, that's 13.5 hours I spend more with them. I also do bedtime for both kids. That takes about one hour a night for baths and stories, etc. That's another seven hours a week. Wife also says she gets stressed out a lot. 
I often take the kids with me to the supermarket or to the park or something to let her have a long bath in peace or an afternoon nap. Probably around three and a half hours a week if we also add that in. I'm the one who also takes the kids to all extracurriculars and picks them up. She does not ever have the kids on her own. The longest she does is the time it takes me to have a shower and get dressed each morning. So I just broke it down plainly like above. I effectively spend a full actual day more a week with them. I don't say it in any kind of moaning way or anything like that. I do actually really enjoy spending time with them, so I'm quite happy with the arrangement. I just feel that she can't complain that the kids don't want to spend time with her when she spends so much less time with them than I do. Am I the jerk for pointing this out? Edit. Something I missed in my original post. We own a business together. We both work at it 5 days a week, 9.30 to 4.30. It's not stressful or particularly difficult work, as the business has got to the stage where we're kind of able to take a step back and it mostly runs itself. Update. 18-month-old woke up at 5.30 this morning. It's now 7.30 and she's still in bed, so clearly our conversation had no impact. I don't really care or have any desire to change things because I quite like how they are, so I don't plan to push it. Not the jerk. If the tone was neutral and not demeaning, then you have nothing to apologize for pointing out the specific examples of the time disparity. Would I be the jerk if I take my two biological kids for a beach weekend when my stepkids are with their mom? I, 32 female, have two stepkids who are 14 and 13 and two biological kids who are 4 and 2. I don't have a very good relationship with my stepkids right now and they don't have a good relationship with their half-siblings. This makes having family time together a very rough experience. It's also impossible for us all to have a good time if I take out all four kids anywhere alone. It's a mess. So when my sister asked me if I'd like to have a beach weekend when my husband is out of town for work next month, I said sure. Her husband owns a beach house and she was planning to go with the kids and our mutual best friend and her kids. My mother-in-law did not like the plan because my stepkids will be with their mom and she feels something like this should wait until I have the kids, despite the fact nobody would have fun doing this. My husband TJ supports me going and told his parents as such. I admit that I'm conflicted. For those who need the background, I met TJ 12 years ago. My stepkids were both under 3 years old at the time. Their mother was engaged to someone at the time too. We got along fine. TJ and I got married after 2 years together. Not long after things changed with the kid's mother. Her engagement broke down sometime before TJ and I got married. A while after my marriage, she became very toxic and angry. She hated me most of all and accused me of trying to replace her with the kids and make her look like a bad mom. None of this is true. This started years of alienation and an unsettled parenting time split with the courts sometimes taking custody from her, giving her every other weekend or 50-50. Currently it's 50-50. The kids are in therapy we have all been ordered into mediation, co-parenting classes, family therapy as a group of five, and therapy between TJ and the mom. She's been arrested three times, which has influenced the court's rulings on custody at times. The kids believe her that I'm trying to replace her. They believe I tried to make her look bad. They hate me. When they interact with me, they tell me I'm not their mom and they won't do chores when only I'm home or they won't go to the store with me. My husband ended up hiring someone to help when he works. They behave way better with him, except where our biological kids together are concerned. They've been punished at times for their behavior. It's not ideal. It doesn't work. They're still in therapy. I don't need them to love me. But to not get angry and lash out for my presence would be ideal. To not be cruel to their half-siblings. Not the jerk. But none of this story was necessary, and all you are going to do is make yourself look bad with it. The bottom line is that your stepkids are going to be with their mom, you have the right to be where you want with your own kids. Even if everyone got along wonderfully, you would still have the right to do that. I don't see the conflict here. Go to the beach with your two kids. Enjoy it and ignore any input from mother-in-law. Not the jerk, but learn to be less forthcoming with private information. Why was anyone else aware of your plan to go to the beach? The only person who needed to know, apart from your sister of course, was your husband. Karen lets her cat roam the neighborhood, so I had him neutered. I run a TNR program for feral cats. Nonprofit, I catch all cats, and then I get them the medical attention that they need myself out of my own pocket. I love helping them. A lot of the cats are not able to be rehomed, so I fix them and release them. Get them their shots and hope for the best. 
I'm not a large-scale operation. Recently, I was called to an area overrun with orange cats. They were everywhere, and I mostly ended up handing it over to the professionals. I did, however, manage to grab three very sweet cats. Two were terrified, skinny, looked like they had seen a few fights, but were overall friendly. The third one was a little gent. He was tubby, well-groomed, fish pattern collar, the works. My plan was to find his parents and drop him off with a warning to keep him in due to the large amount of traps being set. Then the little guy sprayed the inside of my car to the max. So apparently he wasn't fixed. I couldn't really tell, long hair, and assumed he was, so I left my covers off. Big mistake. I debated taking him home or taking him to get neutered with the rest. He was an indoor slash outdoor cat, indicated by his collar tag, and with so many strays, I'm certain some were carrying his genetics. Ultimately, I took him with me and got him neutered. No chip, so I called the number on his tag and informed them where their cat was and gave them time slots to pick him up or to have him dropped off. The owners went ballistic. They were going off on me and came to collect their cat not 20 minutes later. They called me a cat thief, blamed me for their kid having nightmares, scared over their cat going missing. I tried to explain that he needed to be fixed if he was going to be outside, but they didn't want to know. They said I should have called immediately, regardless. I spoke to my rescue friend who said I was in the wrong. Even though we know we're technically in the right, we didn't have the legal ground to do that and it wasn't my decision to make. I did apologize, but I have blocked their numbers. The mom is flaming me on Facebook and DMing people I know. I have a duty to take care of stray cats. Me knowing an unneutered male was roaming free and not doing anything about it was a concern for said stray cats. Things are still tense between my rescue buddy and I, and I don't completely disagree. I know I crossed a line, even if it was for the greater good. People are finding out and taking sides, so I'm not sure who to really believe was right here. So, am I the jerk? You're the jerk. You did steal their cat, and you made a superbly arrogant decision to have him neutered without the owner's permission. You can judge them all you want for letting their cat outside, but the first thing you should have done was to call the cat's owners and ask, Hey, I found your cat. Did you know he was outside? That's the basic due diligence right here. How a vet decided to neuter the cat means you must have taken off the collar and obscured the owner's information, or they would not have done it without your permission. You just made yourself very actionable legally. You don't know if they were planning to breed the cat, and he just happened to get out. OP. I spoke to my vet. She's a TNR vet. She neuters and moves on. There was no address on the collar, so my vet said it was fine. I don't know if she tried to call the owners or not, though. I personally don't condone the breeding of cats when we have so many dying, literally, for homes. Not three weeks ago, I dropped off at least 30 kittens and a couple pregnant mamas at a rescue. Maybe 10 will be adopted. The rest will be put down. It's horrible. I don't really care if they had plans to breed truthfully. Well, then you shouldn't care if they sue you, I guess, since you feel you're completely in the right and justified, right? I understand that the cat overpopulation problem is horrible. I'm a cat owner myself. My problem is that you stole someone else's pet. There is zero justification for that. And if the vet is that careless, they're leaving themselves open to being sued as well. You should have the burden of calling the owner before deciding to permanently alter their pet. Everyone sucks here. The owners for letting an intact pet outside unsupervised to breed, and you for having a surgical medical procedure done to an animal that you knew had owners, without the owner's permission. Regardless of the morality of allowing pets to contribute to the stray population, for which the owner is a jerk, making medical decisions for someone else's pet makes you a massive jerk. Everyone sucks. A free-roaming cat is a feral cat. You're not the jerk. Thank you for your service. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or the cat's owners? Please let us know. Am I the jerk for cooking while my roommate's girlfriend was here and offering her some? I, 21 male, am from the South. I grew up in New Orleans in Texas. My mom runs a catering business and the majority of clients were either at home in Louisiana or in Texas. I add this to say that I grew up cooking and helping my mom cook for the business. I was frying chicken and catfish when I could reach the stove and making gumbo and buttermilk biscuits at a very young age. I'm currently in culinary school right now. I've lived in a rented house on the East Coast with my roommate, 22 male, for a year and a half. He's not a friend or anything. We just linked up because we both needed roommates in the area. He's good to live with and we watch shows and movies together. We hang out and go out for drinks sometimes. I always make friends easy because of being from the South and doing customer service related things when I was a kid. I know how to talk and charm and listen to folks 
despite being naturally more of an introverted person. My roommate has been seeing his girlfriend, who's 20, for six months. I've met her before and I've seen her in passing. Roommate and his girlfriend had a two week break from school things. She still lives at her parents, so she decided to stay here the whole two weeks. I was just doing things as I normally would. It got weird at first when I was about to go mow the lawn and the roommate stopped me and said he wanted to mow. I usually always mow. A couple of days later, I was outside washing my car. I asked both of them if they wanted to do theirs. She looked like she was going to agree, but he looked at her angrily, so they declined. I cook pretty frequently at home as well and usually let my roommate have some. So anytime I'd make some, I would say that they could have some and this would get him upset. Weeks prior when she was here and we were all talking, she mentioned this specific kind of cheesecake that she really likes. So I made it and sent out a group text that everyone could have some. My roommate got upset. I don't see anything as overstepping a boundary as this is how I treat him and all of our guests. The other day he told me how annoying it was to hear his girlfriend talk about how good your roommate's fresh baked bread is. I'm not trying to make him look bad or anything. This is simply how I was raised. If I bake two loaves of bread, I'm going to leave it out for the rest of the house to eat. Edit. The cheesecake is just common courtesy type thing to me. When his parents came over, I made pound cake because they like it. If a guest is coming, you get or make what they like. Nothing odd about picking up their favorite chips or making some tea when guests arrive. Just how I was raised. Edit. Wow, this is blown up. Just want to say we generally have a good roommate relationship. We're not best friends, but it's friendly enough. The only change has been when his girlfriend is here. So, no, I'm not looking for new roommates to be adopted or to move out, but thanks. Here's some more things that upset him. I went to the grocery store and asked if anyone needed anything. I was frying chicken and I offered the first and best pieces to them straight out of the oil. I changed the oil to my own car. I used a smoker in the backyard to make brisket. I grill and smoke in the backyard and needed a piece of wood cut in a certain way to hold something up. I cut and nailed some wood together in the garage. Feels like I can't even exist while she's here. Update. A lot of people wanted an update. I wanted to see my roommate in a more positive light. I tend to try to see the best in people, but reading the replies and his recent actions have really opened my eyes. I never took him too seriously because he's a pretty harmless little guy in my perspective. There is a big difference in how he lashes out at me compared to his girlfriend. He's gotten big tough with me in text form, but only mildly upset when I see him in person. I have taken a step back and looked at anything I could have done to provoke him, not excusing his behavior. And while I don't believe I'm in the wrong for being hospitable and a hosting guest, if a 75-year-old man were staying with us, I would treat him the same as I've treated his girlfriend. I do realize that he's not from the South. I was told by others in school that women outside the South don't enjoy being called ma'am. However, I've never seen a lady get angry if I did call her ma'am up here. I call women of all ages dear or darling, and I could see how that could be seen as flirtatious, even though it's just part of how I speak. Now that he knows I've seen him in his true form, he doesn't even try to act the way he did before. I sent his girlfriend screenshots of the texts he sent and told her the things that he said. I'm not sure if she's leaving or staying, but I've let her know and told her to let me know if she needs any help. I don't plan on moving anytime soon as I enjoy having room for a grill and a smoker and a garage. He told me he's looking for new places to live and will potentially go back to his parents. I make enough working at a restaurant to afford the rent alone. I would like more going into savings, but I'm not worried financially for the time being. I'm flattered and overwhelmed by all the positive replies. About a hundred of you told me to thank my mom, so I sure will. I grew up working in hospitality with my mom and siblings. My dad is the one that instilled respect in me. He never felt emasculated, even when my mom's business ended up making more than he does. They just save their money from their jobs and go on vacation a lot. Final edit. I tend to see the good and the best in people, so I wasn't seeing him as being very insecure and was trying to look at this in a more positive light. But he just texted me and said that I greet his girlfriend in too kind of a way and it's annoying that I say, be safe, when she leaves the house. I say this to him and everyone when they tell me that they're going somewhere. He sent me a long text detailing it's bad that I look her in the eyes when she's talking to me. Maybe it's time for a new roommate. Not the jerk. You are raising a bar he doesn't want raised by getting things done. He wants to pretend he's a better partner than he is. He also doesn't want you to highlight things he isn't interested in doing. In a way, you are unintentionally showing that he isn't the best partner material around. Keep doing as you are. He's being ridiculous. So he's okay with you feeding him, 
but has a problem when you offer to feed his girlfriend who just happens to be in the house? It's not like you only cook when she's there. Why? Is he afraid you're going to steal her with food? Is he afraid she's only hanging out with him because you feed her? Ask roommate what the problem is and then stop doing what he doesn't like. If that means not feeding her, then stop feeding him too. You sound like a great roommate. You mow and offer to wash their cars? Who does that? You're like Southern Hospitality supersized. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.